Hello everyone, welcome to this next video on field theory. In this video, we shall see the cyclotomic polynomials. In the previous videos, we have seen several tests for of irreducibility, right? And moreover, we saw that cyclotomic polynomials are irreducible polynomials in the last video. And we have given the proof using Eisenstein's criteria when n is prime. So in this video, we shall see what are these polynomials and how can we calculate these polynomials, right? So if we are given any positive integer n, then the nth cyclotomic polynomial, this is the unique irreducible polynomial with integer coefficients. It has integer coefficients. It is irreducible polynomial. This is unique polynomial. Moreover, that is the divisor of this polynomial x to the power n minus 1 and it is not a divisor of x to the power k minus 1 where this k is less than this n, right? Suppose this polynomial divides x to the power 3 minus 1. So it would not divide x to the power one, uh, 2 minus 1 and it would not divide x to the power 1 minus 1, right? So this is what they are saying. So now what does it mean uh, that uh, this polynomial is a divisor of x to the power n minus 1. So uh, suppose we are to find the root of this polynomial x to the power n minus 1 that means we are looking for n right. So x to the power n is equal to 1 or we are looking for n which is equal to 1 to the power 1 by n that means we are looking for the nth roots of unity for this case. So you must be uh, knowing uh, what are the nth roots of unity likewise you, uh, you have you might have studied in complex analysis that the nth roots of unity they are given by this e, e that is exponential raised to power 2 pi iota k upon n where what is this k this is also a positive integer right and it is less than or equal to n that means if n is 3 so it could be 1 2 3 right so uh, we can have a look at example to understand this nth roots of unity we will consider x cube minus 1 is equal to 0 so we are looking for all those x which is equal to 1 to the power 1 by 3 that is the third root of unity so in this case according to this formula so uh, our n is equal to 3 therefore k is equal to 1 to 3 right so according to this formula we have e to the power 2 pi iota k is 1 then k is 2 then k is 3 divided by n so we have three roots right and uh, by de Moivre's formula you know e to the power iota theta this is equal to cos theta plus iota sin theta right so we have implied the same thing so it is equal to 2 pi upon 3 into iota so this thing could be written as cos into 2 pi upon 3 plus iota into sin 2 pi upon 3 similarly over here we, uh, with iota we have 4 pi upon 3 so it is cos 4 pi upon 3 plus iota sin 4 pi upon 3 likewise it is cos 2 pi plus iota sin 2 pi so now you know sin 2 pi is equivalent to 0 this cos 2 pi is equivalent to 1 so this root becomes simply 1 what about these roots so cos 2 pi you might be knowing from trigonometry how to solve these right cos 2 pi comes out to be minus 1 by 2 sin 2 pi by 3 comes out to be root 3 by 2 so this root becomes uh, minus 1 by 2 plus oeta square root 3 by 2 and the second root cos 4 pi by 3 it comes out to be minus 1 by 2 and sin 4 pi by 3 it comes out to be minus square root 3 by 2 therefore we have these three roots right so this polynomial x cube minus 1 could be written as the uh, three polynomials x minus the first root, x minus the second root and x minus the third root, right? Or generalizing this, we can write this as x minus the root, x minus the three, the product of x minus the three roots, right? Where, what is this k? This k is varying from 1 to n and what is n here n is 3 basically in this case for x cube minus 1 we have n as 3 right so basically you can write any polynomial of this kind as the product of this 
and when do we call such a polynomial now now you saw that you can write any polynomial of this form as a product of some polynomials where you write them these polynomials as x minus some root of unity right so now when can you call these polynomials as cyclotomic polynomials when so by definition there is one thing that we are lacking it should not the whatever the coefficients you are writing the uh, product polynomials you are writing they should not divide some lower uh, factor of like uh, some lower uh, power of x like x to the power k minus 1 right so let us understand it in this way so the cyclotomic polynomial phi 3 x what would be that it would just be the product obviously this polynomial should divide this but it like it should not divide x square minus 1 and it should not divide x minus 1 right so it should divide this but it should not divide this and this so that means we are left only with these two polynomials and when you multiply these polynomials so it would be x you can uh, just uh, open this bracket so you'll get x plus 1 by 2 and here you would get minus o eta square root 2 3 by 2 right and here in uh, you you will get x plus 1 by 2 plus iota square root 3 by 2 so now you can simplify this it would be x plus 1 by 2 square minus right so a minus b and a plus b right so we have a square minus b square so it would be iota square square root of 3 by 2 it would be 3 by 4 so iota square it is minus 1 so it this will this would become plus so it we have plus 3 by 4 and here we would have x square plus 1 by 4 right and then we have x the um, just opening a plus b whole square so it would be a square plus b square plus 2 into a into b right so this thing so we have x square plus x plus 1 so this is the cyclotomic polynomial phi 3 of x so we'll just verify this in a moment right so generalizing the cyclotomic polynomials by definition we need those roots of unity those e to the power 2 pi iota k by n where k is positive integer k is less than n as in the previous case and k is co prime to n so here that means the gcd of k and n should be 1 so those factors are included in this cyclotomic polynomial so for example here we ha we had n is equal to 3 and we had k is equal to 1 2 and 3 so the only k which are co prime to n are 1 and 2 right so the factors that we have used corresponding to k is equal to 1 so this factor corresponding this one and this factor so uh, when you mul uh, you saw when we uh, you have multiplied these two factors you have obtained the cyclotomic polynomial so this is the necessary condition to obtain a cyclotomic polynomial so generalizing this definition as we have written for the uh, roots of unity right this one we now have one extra condition that is gcd of k and n should be 1 in addition to all these things so the cyclotomic polynomials could be written as the product of these polynomials where what are these these are the nth roots of unity moreover these are primitive nth roots of unity primitive means the gcd of k and n should be equal to 1 so now for uh, integers uh, n varying from 1 to 30 the cyclotomic polynomials are written like these you can have a look all the coefficients here are either 1 minus 1 right and in some cases the coefficients the coefficients here are 1 minus 1 or 0 right you can see moreover there are two formulas for special cases when n is given to be prime in that case 
we have phi n x which is equal to the summation x to the power k. So let us have a look. 2 is prime therefore it should be uh, k varying from 0 to n minus 1. So it should be 1 plus x to the power 1. 2 minus 1 that means it is equal to 1. So x to the power 1. So 3 is also prime. So it should be x to the power 0 plus x to the power 1 plus x to the power 2. We will uh, go up to 3 minus 1, n minus 1, right? So uh, again 5 is prime. So we have 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x raised to power 4. We will go up to 5 minus 1, that is 4. Again for 7, we have this thing. Again for 11, we have this thing. For 13, we have this thing and so on, right? And uh, when n is equal to 2p, where p is some odd prime number, in that case, you can write the polynomial as minus x raised to power k, where k varies from 0 to p minus 1, right? For example, you have 5, 4. Here, you can write this 4 as 2 into 2, right? So, p in this case is 2. So, therefore, your polynomial would be Sorry, uh, p should be odd prime. So we cannot take this case, right? It should be an odd prime. We, we can take this case. So 6 could be written as 2 into 3, where this 3 is a prime number and it is also odd, right? So therefore, you can write this as summation k varies from 0 to p minus 1, 3 minus 1, minus x raised to power k. So it should be equal to minus x raised to power 0 plus minus x raised to power 1 plus minus x raised to power 2. So it is equal to 1 minus x plus x square, right? So you can uh, calculate some of these uh, like these and uh, there are also various methods to calculate these polynomials. Now uh, the main formula here is the, what is the relationship between the cyclotic, uh, cyclotomic polynomials and the primitive roots of unity? As we have seen, the primitive roots of unity are given by this polynomial x to the power n minus 1. This is equal to pi phi dx d divides n. So now it means we can write this as product of polynomials uh, x minus a x minus b and so on right where this a b these are the pri nth primitive roots of unity moreover these uh, roots here d should be a divisor of n what is the given power n here d should divide that power so we'll take only those cyclotomic polynomials where this d divides n so for example we we are talking about x to the power 15 minus 1 so in that case, our cyclotomic uh, this could be written as the product. Now d divides 15. So what, what is d? d should be 1. It should be 3. It should be 5. It should be 15. So we would have 5 1x multiplied by 5 3x multiplied by 5 5x multiplied by 5 5 15x, right? So this is the thing. So this, this is a result. Moreover, these polynomials are irreducible polynomials as it is given in the definition. So this proof in general was given by Gauss. And when n is prime, it is given by Eisenstein's criteria. And we, we have already proved this thing, right? Using the Eisenstein's criteria in the previous video. Now the last thing that I wanted to talk about is the degree of this polynomial phi n x. It is given by a function phi n which is known as the Euler's totient function or Euler phi function denoted by this phi. And how do we calculate this phi of some integer n? It is calculated by calculating all the positive integers which are less than n and which are relatively prime to n. So that means we are looking for the number of k's such that the GCD of k with n is equal to 1. So how many, uh, that many k's 
which fulfill these condition they are counted and they are equal to phi n of phi of n right for example we are calculating phi of 3 so the numbers 1 and 2 they are relatively prime to 3 right 3 uh, 3 is not counted because the gcd of 3 with 3 itself is equal to 3 and it is not equal to 1 so the only numbers that we have is 1 and 2 so counting them it gives me 2 so phi of 3 is 2 phi of 4 is again 2 because the numbers less than or equal to 4 are 1 2 3 and 4 but the gcd of 2 with 4 is 2 which is not equal to 1 and the gcd of 4 with 4 is equal to 4 which is not equal to 1 therefore we have only 1 and 3 so 2 in total again phi of 5 this is this this is equal to 1 2 3 and 4 because the gcd of 5 with 5 that is equal to 5 and it is not equal to 1 therefore these are total 4 in number so we have 5 of 5 as 4 similarly 5 of 20 it is equal to 8 because these are the only numbers whose which are relatively prime to 20 right so in this way you can calculate this moreover here uh, you may note that uh, this is prime number so you have phi of any prime number p this is equal to p minus 1 because every number which is less than p is relatively prime to p that that is by the definition of a prime number right more uh, you can find more about this euler totian function in number theory subject right so that is it for this video i hope that is interesting thank you for watching